This is kind of a cop-out. Uh, today is the 29th of July and it's my birthday. I don't actually have time to generate a new video this week uh, to be published tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of lessons from our membership community and it comes under the Lower Your Property Risk course. I think it's valuable, uh, but if you want to follow on from this, then just go across to our membership community which is incidentally free to join and review the other lessons. There's 11 lessons in total in this course and I'm going to present to you now the first two lessons. So I hope you enjoy. Please put in the comments below if you have any suggestions or any comments to make or questions to ask uh, and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe now. Until the next video I look forward to speaking to you then and in the meantime after you've watched this video also have a look around because there's lots of other videos on this YouTube site. Hi, my name is Jim J. Davidson and I first invested in property in 1973. I completed my first new build development in 2006. As you can imagine, I've made lots of mistakes along the way, but thankfully I've got some things right and I've managed to build a property development business. In this channel, I want to help you on your journey and perhaps share some of that knowledge with you. And so through this channel, which I hope you will subscribe to, or through our membership app, which I hope you will join, and incidentally it's free, um, you can learn a little bit more about building houses and building a property development business. The app is available wherever you get your app from, whether you're on iOS or you have an Android phone, um, or you can get accesses on desktop, and you'll find a link in the description below. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video, and please post your comments in the description below if you have any comments to make. In this course, we're going to talk about some of the obvious and not so obvious property dangers that can affect your property business. And we'll go through these one by one. And then towards the end, we're going to talk about how you can mitigate that risk and in order to build a very stable and profitable property business. Interest rates have never been so low. In fact, we're currently sitting at 0.1% uh, for much of the decade of the 2010s, we were sitting around the 0.5 and even went down to 0.25. So the idea of going down to 0.1 uh, is extremely low. In fact, um, I recently heard that even uh, the governor of the Bank of England has considered or is looking at the possibility of introducing negative interest rates. Now, that doesn't mean to say that you're going to be paid money on your mortgage or your loan if you take one out. Um, but what it means is that the bank rate, in other words, the rate at which the banks borrow money, which is the bank base lending rate, which is what the Bank of England uh, talk about, is the money that they buy the money at and then they lend it to you. And, the, and what that is called, the difference between is called the spread. So the, the rate at which they borrow money from and the rate at which you, they lend money to you is the spread. Now, if you go back to uh, 2006, 7, 8, um, very, very competitive market for mortgages and loans. Uh, many mortgages were uh, working out a spread of of points of a percent. So um, I had a mortgage, in fact, um, on a property that had 0.7% spread. And so the effective rate of that, um, when it went down from a bank lending rate of that time of about five or six percent, um, and I was paying a mortgage of somewhere around six or seven percent, I can't quite remember exactly the figures, but uh, when that dropped, effectively my borrowing rate was 1.2% and it stayed at that for many years because of the type of mortgage I had on that particular property. So I saw my payments go from somewhere around about 650 pounds a month on that property to something like 150 pounds a month. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that is exactly the figures, but it was significantly lower from what it had been. Um, and so the spread there was very, very narrow. 
Uh, today there is a much larger spread and that's partly because the banks have been shoring up their uh, balance sheets uh, because of the global financial crisis in 2008. Um, but the reality is that because we've lived with slow interest rates for such a long time, people don't believe that they're ever going to go up. And in fact, I was um, uh, co-hosting a training event, a property training event in 2015. And one of the delegates, we were talking about interest rates, and one of the delegates, delegates should I say, um, said that interest rates would never rise to the sort of magnitude that I've seen them. I saw a, a mortgage rate of 17% during the 1980s. And, um, and certainly well above 10% in the 1970s. And so the idea that, that the interest rates would never rise uh, doesn't occur to a lot of people who are borrowing money, cur money currently, whether that be for investment or whether that be uh, for any other purpose. And so you need to be very much aware of that and in any calculation hedge in the fact that interest rates are likely to rise and can rise quite dramatically. Now often the trigger for uh, interest rates to rise is a higher inflation rate. And of course we've had a very low inf inflation rate. In fact, uh, again, going back to the 70s, I remember having an inflation rate of 25%. Now that's a double-edged sword for people who have got property because what that saw was that property prices rose. And in fact, if you've watched um, some of my other material, you will have heard me talk about how I purchased a property for 7,500 in 1973. And by 1979, that property was worth 21,000. So almost tripling in price um, with doing nothing to the property, incidentally. That was just simply exactly the same property. In fact, one could argue that it, it wasn't in as good a shape uh, prior to that as it was um, uh, as when we purchased it. Now, that's probably not quite true because we did do some minor upgrades, but, but not, nothing by today's standards of upgrading it. So uh, there was still a lot of work to be done on that property. So the... Uh, so, what you have to look at is, um, is understand that there's certain world events also that can trigger interest rate rises. Now, if you look currently, and we are in, still in the, the, the time of recording in the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the issues is that we have uh, a world event that's happened and that's changed things. And what that had the effect of is that the governments are pumping unprecedented amounts of money into the economy and and that will eventually lead to inflation now a lot of people expected after 2008 2009 global financial crisis for that to lead to inflation but in part the reason it didn't was because uh, the financial sector was still in such poor shape the financial sector actually today is in far better shape and and so it is likely that that uh, uh, um, amount of money that's sloshing around in the, the economy will lead to inflation. And, and that's when interest rates will go up, as will probably taxation as well, in order to take money out of the economy. Because one of the things that people don't understand is that the whole purpose of taxation is about taking money out of the economy. It's not, as most people think, in, to support government spending. Um, and that's a whole new, that's a whole different subject, which I'm not going to cover here. So just be aware that interest rates are likely to rise in the future. And in, certainly in any plans that you make, you need to factor that in. And particularly in a volatile world where things can change, um, as did in 1974, where we had um, the OPEC countries uh, reducing the amount of oil that was pumped into the economy. Um, so uh, the supply of oil became shorter. And of course, so many things uh, involve oil. It's not just fuel, uh, but things like plastic. So it had a significant effect on the world, a shortage of oil. In the UK, that was exacerbated by the miners going on strike and therefore holding coal production back. So um, one of the things I would advise is that you 
may not be interested in investing in the stock market, but you should uh, look at magazines uh, that track the stock market so that you get an understanding uh, with all the fluff taken away and, and none of the uh, material which goes uh, seeks headlines, um, uh, sen uh, sensational headlines uh, like the TV, media or whether it be newspapers, um, that will give you what's really happening in the world and the stock market reflects the economies of the world and you'll find lots, of, you'll really find out what's happening in the world from a financial magazine which uh, is which you think is all about finance, but it's really about what's happening in the world because everything that happens in the world has a financial implication. Uh, I subscribe every week to a, a magazine called Money Week, but it could be The Economist or any other financial uh, magazine that you would um, be happy with. And that's a very, very good investment for a very, very small sum of money. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos then click to watch the next video. Please remember to visit our website at builditandprosper.com to get our app or click on the button on the YouTube header if you're on desktop.